Dustin. And we'd like to say Sego and welcome uh, for another edition of CKL Wednesday. We remind you of views and opinions expressed by our guests and our callers during Dedewatala, not necessarily those of 97.3 CKL when or the Aquazaste Communication Society. And phone lines are open if you have any questions about today's topic. 518-358-3427, 613-575-2101. And we'll be glad to get the information that you're looking for today. Our first session of uh, Dedo Atala earlier today were with our elected leadership, MCA Grand Chief uh, Abram Benedict, also Sirridge's Mohawk Tribal Council Chiefs, uh, Michael Connors, Beverly Cook, and Eric Thompson. And also uh, we had Heather Phillips on the program. She's the executive director of the Mohawk Council of Aquazaste. So right now we're going to turn to our emergency uh, planning personnel. Uh, these are uh, first responders. Uh, and when we're looking at uh, the Sirridge's Sibridges Mohawk Tribe, we have Derek Cummins, who is the Sibridges Mohawk Tribal Emergency Management and Safety Director. And we also have Scott Peters, who is the Mohawk Council of Aquazaste uh, Emergency Measures Program Coordinator. And today, both gentlemen will be breaking down the Aquazaste Joint Emergency Operation Plant, also the Emergency Operation Center. Uh, those were activated yesterday with the state of emergency uh, that were called by uh, both of our governments here on the territory. And they're also going to contact, uh, they're going to pass along some contact information with regards on uh, how to uh, get get in touch with anybody that's at the EOC. Again, that stands for uh, Emergency Operations Center. So with that, uh, we have uh, both gentlemen joining us in the studios uh, today. Uh, we have Derek Cummins and Scott Peters. Sego and welcome, guys. As we uh, welcome both gentlemen to the program, as I mentioned, uh, Derek Cummins and Scott Peters. Gentlemen. Hi. <laughs> you can go first. Okay. <laughs> um, good, um, good morning or good afternoon. Sorry, it's been a long few days. Um, we're here just to uh, go a little bit into the emergency planning and management uh, portion of what we're doing. Um, just to add on to what our leadership discussed earlier this morning. Okay. Uh, so, again, that's uh, Derek Cummins. He is our Sibridges Mohawk Tribal Emergency Management and Safety Director. And now we have Scott Peters, who joins us as well uh, with the Mohawk Council of Aquazasi Emergency Measures Program. He is the coordinator. Uh, Sego, and welcome, Scott. Thank you, Rain Sego. Um, so, just to update real quick, yeah, we did opera, open up our Emergency Operations Center yesterday. It's still in process. We should have it fully operational by this afternoon, along with contact numbers for it. That'll be out with our communications when we get that out, I mean, available this afternoon. Now, are we opening two or are we opening one? Yes, so we'll, have, we'll each have uh, our own EOC open. Uh, we have also opened ours. It's in a very limited capacity at this time, and we anticipate that it'll grow as, the, uh, as this event grows. Uh, I can share our information at this time. We do have an email. It's EOC at srmt-nsn.gov and the phone number which will be up this afternoon is 518-320-0019 okay give me that number again 518-320-0019 okay 518-320-0019 Zero zero one nine. Yes. Okay. So that's the number for the Sibridges Mohawk Tribes uh, Emergency Operations Center EOC. And again, that email EOC at SRMT NSN dot gov. Um, so uh, uh, look, Scott. Yeah. So right now we do have our uh, both the operations centers open, and we are working together constantly in contact when need to be. Reasoning uh, reasoning again is just social distancing we don't want too many people overcrowding our rooms and right now if we were to do that we'd have about 15 20 people in a room and it's just precautions yep uh with that that's how we're going to be doing it we're also working with our outside partners the same way anytime like email or video conferencing conference calls 
things like that. So we're utilizing technology more in the emergency response uh, uh, portion of our plan here for the state of emergency. And you guys, I know, have gone to the conferences, you've gone to the workshops, you've participated in the mock drills here in the territory. Um, you guys have been planning for this, and I hate to have this be your, uh, you know, here we are, and we're, you know, to have to utilize those skills, but I feel very confident and uh, safe with both of you being the head of things. Uh, that makes me feel uh, very good, uh, especially with regards to both of uh, the, the smarts that both of you gentlemen have. You're very intelligent, and I know that you both truly care for our community, which makes it even better. So we appreciate that. Um, I know something uh, called the Aquazasi Joint Emergency Operations Plan. Um, so that's where we've been working together for the last few weeks. Now, now, Irene, for the for the kind words. Um, so yeah, this is an unprecedented event, and we are really learning as we go. Um, we need to flatten the curve and uh, practice social distancing, self quarantine if needed, uh, as needed if you have flu like symptoms. So with this, the Aquasystem Joint Emergency Plan has been a document that was, um, I believe, uh, possibly Larry White originally wrote this years ago and it's been updated throughout the years and this document allows the councils to work it provides us guidance to work together uh, in a state of emergency um, and all three councils the Mohawk Council of Wakuzasne, Sarangis Mohawk Tribe and the Mohawk Nation Council of Chiefs are all shareholders in this document. Now, if we were to, uh, to, to follow you guys uh, online, um, some people uh, follow you guys on Facebook. Are you, are you going to have your own Facebook page, or is everything you're putting out going to be through the tribe and the MCA uh, main pages? Yeah. I, think our, I think our goal is to have one source of information for each, uh, each government. Um, we, we've had people calling, like our social service division, our health office, my office, our front desk, we're getting multiple places that people are calling, and we're trying to limit that. That's why we've opened the EOC hotline, and I would like to see only one point of distribution for um, for any media, which would be the uh, Facebook pages for respective councils and uh, websites such as for each one. Okay. So srmt-nsn.gov is the website for the tribe. Uh, for MCA, it's aquasase.ca. Um, so if we were to, uh, to need the... Uh, the EOC, what would we go to you guys for? Right now, what we're looking at is uh, calling in, like he was saying, Derek was saying, to centralize questions, centralize if you need to, if you think you have symptoms of COVID, we can direct you to that. Although we have been putting out phone numbers and uh, places to call, we don't want people coming into the facilities yep. just to avoid contact, social distancing again. Um, and it's mainly because, like Derek was saying again, was that so many people throughout our organizations are getting all these calls from community members and they don't necessarily may not have the right answers okay. or answers for them. So this is just going to centralize it for, so that we could get out accurate, uh, good information. Perfect. Again, we're talking with uh, Derek Cummins and also Scott Peters from the Sibridges Mohawk Tribe and also MCA, respectively. Uh, we're talking about the Aquasasi Joint Emergency Operations Plans, the Emergency Operations Center, and also the contact information. So, so far uh, with the opening of the EOC on Monday, uh, you know, things are, uh, are still working into place. And I think one of the important things that we took away from the meeting we just had with the chiefs, uh, the Didwatala, was the 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 fluid uh, the the transition and um, the way the information and situations have to be fluid during these types of things? Yes, exactly. And uh, I was in a meeting in Malone this morning with uh, Franklin County Emergency Operations Center, and the the statement they made was: if the governor goes on the radio once a day, then things change once a day. If the governor's on the has a press conference twice a day, then things change twice a day. Although. That doesn't, the governor does not really relate to the things we're doing. Um, it's still, uh, how we operate is the same. Things are changing daily, sometimes multiple times a day. Yep. And with us, we're taking lead, or we're taking direction from our health unit and yeah. how they get their information and their updates daily. We're, we're heavily relying on their uh, interpretation and how it's going to affect us, how we can work it into what we're doing. 
So. Okay. So in case, like, uh, I know that they are talking like four to eight weeks kind of deal, just as a ballpark, you know, at least kind of thing. So if people were to get low on supplies, if people were to get low on food, would that be something that you guys are working into your plan in the coming weeks to be able to distribute supplies? Is that right now, how it would help us? Yeah, MCA has started with that on our side right now, and we have started making food deliveries to certain families that have... Um, requested the need for it yeah so we started that delivery tomorrow uh, today okay. this afternoon i think they're going to start delivering green food bags who's ever on that list is going to be delivered to their homes rather than have them come into the facilities and things like that to pick up yeah i had a gentleman uh, phone this morning about a green bag and i thought he meant the saint patrick's day thing <laughs> and i giggled a little bit and then i i felt uh, so foolish he was talking about the green food bags so yeah, i said i'm so sorry sir Derek? Uh, as on the food delivery side, our Office for the Aging, which does daily uh, meals for the seniors, has uh, increased their um, food, the home food delivery. And I, I couldn't give you the number, but it's increased by quite a bit. Yeah. Um, also, uh, Simon River is doing a drop-off uh, pick up, food pickup for students under the age of 18. Yep. And that happens from 10 to 11.30, I believe, daily. That pickup point is at the St. Regis Mohawk School. And the Boys and Girls Club is also doing a dinner uh, f from 4:30 to 6, I believe, through for um, for students as well. So that's a great place to pick up food. Uh, same deal with uh, with what MCA is doing. Uh, Surgeons Mock Tribe is also at this time uh, researching how we can purchase uh, bulk non-perishable food items for our our community if that if it does come to that. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's you know some things that that people are are thinking of, and you know you're thinking of all these different things that um, will affect our families and our community overall. Again, we're talking with Derek Cummins and also Scott Peters. Uh, they both come to us as our uh, heads of our emergency programs uh, through the Sibridges Mohawk Tribe. Uh, Derek Cummins is the Emergency Management and Safety Director, and Scott Peters is the MCA Emergency Measures Program Coordinator. And one other thing that we'll mention with regard to food, the Aquasaste Food Pantry over on McGee Road, uh, their uh, uh, monthly distribution is coming up this Thursday. So uh, we want to make sure that people know they have to uh, uh, register for that, uh, call in advance, don't just show up. It would make it so much easier for them to uh, call and register, 518-358-4860. And they're also uh, uh, going to be doing that from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, with the distribution of the Aquasaste Food Pantry on McGee Road and uh, that'll be from 4 to 6 p.m. So there's a flow of traffic they want people to utilize so that when you pull up, you're pulling up in the right direction and that somebody just puts that food in your car and then you leave. So uh, they're doing it as efficient as they can and with as much uh, uh, the least amount of human contact uh, possible between individuals. So again, pushing that uh, uh, the distancing, social distancing is, is a big thing that's a, a buzzword uh, big time, right, Derek? Yes. Social distancing and flattening the curve have been the two uh, terms that uh, have really been we've been seeing daily. Yeah, because I know that uh, you know we 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 are going to see you know uh, we're likely going to see cases here. Yes. We're going to. We don't want people to panic when we see them. Um, please know that, and I've been, you know, talking about this for the last couple of weeks. Please know that our leadership, our emergency personnel, and our health uh, uh, individuals uh, that are in charge of that at both of our organizations are working behind the scenes always to have your plan. And uh, you guys are big for uh, for planning uh, when it comes to being ready for these types of emergencies, Derek. So, um, Mohawk Council of Oxley and the San Francisco Mohawk Tribe leadership, our healthcare personnel, and our emergency management have been re uh, meeting weekly for the past month. Uh, today, we have a meeting at 1:30. Uh, in in abundance of caution and practicing social distancing, uh, we've changed that from meeting face to face to a teleconference now. Okay. And we've also included uh, some of our local stakeholders and uh, some of the professionals in the community that um, can help us out in this time. Yep, for sure. Um, so, again, that's uh, something they'll be attending uh, later on today in front of their laptops or through their phone or uh, Skype or the teleconference. So it's good, again, that we have the technology to be able to do that because we didn't have this back in, uh, you know, uh, back in the day for sure. So it really helps with this type of emergency situation we find ourselves in. Yes. I was telling Scott, and he agreed with me, that uh, I can 
work a flood or a windstorm any time of the any time of the year but when it comes to this we, we are learning as it goes yeah this is totally new for us and it's new for everybody basically yeah. and what well, we have our pandemic plans we have our plans in place which are going to be evolving as we go along throughout possibly the next like you were saying six weeks maybe longer yeah. eight weeks even into july like we're looking september now so. yeah now, what, what about the people that took uh, CERT, the CERT training? Are these people that we're going to be calling upon, or are we? Uh, do we need volunteers, or are we not there yet? At this point, we're not there, but uh, we have had internal discussions. Uh, myself and Adrian McDonald, who's the instructor for the CERT program, we will, at, at some point, we will be looking to them, and also volunteers. I've been getting text messages daily of uh, people from around the community that are willing to help out as as needed. Um, some of our non-essential staff that have been uh, placed out of work, uh, they're more than welcome, are more than willing to come in and uh, volunteer and assist as needed as well. Excellent. That's what MCA has been doing as well with the non-essential workers. We're reassigning them different duties and just for the time being anyways until we can reassess. Yep, for sure. Excellent. So again, the uh, the phone number for the uh, newly uh, uh, put in forth uh, EOC uh, for the Syrages Mohawk Tribe, it's 518-320-0019. And the email address is eoc at srmt-nsn.gov. Uh, and again, uh, the Mohawk Council of Akwazasi will be announcing their contact information uh, shortly. We do have an email set up. I did forget about it. It is eoc at akwazasna.ca. Okay. All righty. Now, what about uh, the, the, we talked a little bit about it off the top with uh, our leadership. What about the panicked buyers? So you have people now that are, uh, didn't go out and get uh, everything they needed right off the bat. And now they're running out of uh, supplies, uh, down to their last pack of toilet paper is a big one, um, canned foods, uh, things like that. Uh, is that something that uh, people can contact you about? Or can we get um, you know, wholesalers to, to bring that stuff to us and, and distribute it here? Uh, we did have that discussion this morning about uh, creating um, a list of retailers that may be getting a stock overnight and... Uh, um, we can put that out to the community. We do not have that in place at this time, but it's something we're definitely looking looking to do. I know uh, there was also a call out to local businesses to open for a couple hours in the morning for elders only. Uh, there w had popped up a few businesses. I don't know which any of them are at this time, but uh, hopefully we can include that in our announcement soon. For sure. And what we've been told as well is that the supply chain is still there and working for the major stores and the bigger stores. It's mm -hmm. just that the panic rushed buyers all at once so what they've started to seem to be doing is closing at a certain time at night evening able to restock and in the morning they can open up again to have items available for people i know some of uh, the big box stores like shoppers drug mart and i want to say dollar general they're opening uh, their first hour of being open is like derek said for uh seniors and elders only mm -hmm. um because uh it, a lot of people are saying it's been like black friday the last three weeks trying to to get things that uh, people need um people were you know preparing for two weeks like they told them and then the panic set in and it was like okay they bought everything now i need to buy everything yes. and then we have people that you know are just going to go do their regular you know it's a pay week this week for council so mm -hmm. people are going to be going out there to get food or supplies and there's not anything left <laughs> so it's it's a little bit uh, uh you know frightening for some people yes it is um i know some of our local vendors uh, local businesses um have been uh stocking up on as well as they can so check uh, buy local check out the places as, as uh whenever you can yeah, yeah. We appreciate all the businesses uh, that are uh, helping out uh, Aquazaslano for sure. Again, we're talking with Scott Peters and Derek Cummins. They come to us uh, from the emergency programs uh, from the Sibridges Mohawk Tribe and also uh, the Mohawk Council of Aquazasta. Derek, do you have anything else on your side for the presentation? Yeah, I have a few things to add. Um, the... Um the guidance from uh, the White House yesterday was to keep uh, gatherings to 10 or less, and we really agree with that. We need, to, we need to get to that. That was one of the reasons that we made the change this morning to do the conference call. Uh, we don't want to flood the health care system. It is already operating over, over capacity due to a bla bad flu season. Mm -hmm. 
call, please call ahead to the emergency room or the clinic before arriving. If you have symptoms of the flu, please call ahead and they will instruct you what to do. Um, due to the closure, uh, going to non, uh, going to essential services only at Surgeon's Mock Tribe, we're limiting visitation to the buildings. We're asking that you do not report to the buildings unless it's an essential function that you need to do. Uh, there was a question about 24-hour essential facilities remaining open. Yes, they will remain open, such as the IRA homes, uh, the Partridge House, and the group home. If there are clients there, they will be open. Um, where's the other ones? Well, I know that uh, those are our big essential services. I know that um, for Gionkanusa Day and Yakisota, they closed. Uh, they closed. This uh, they weekend, closed yes. uh, down to visitors. Um, they will be there. They are essential services. And again, our PSWs, our nurses, our cooks, our dietary aides, uh, everybody that's down there that makes sure that our elders are taken care of, um, they're able to to get in and out of there. Um, but again, uh, they work real hard for our community, and we don't want that. Uh, uh, health system overtaxed. So uh, we, we really want to remind our um, employees that have been uh, taken out of work that please don't treat this as a vacation. Uh, please practice social distancing. Please practice self-quarantine. Um, do not uh, gather with 50 kids at the playground. Um, we're doing this because we need to flatten the curve. We need to control the spread of this virus. Scott? Basically, what Derek's been saying is what we're trying to re reiterate as well. It's just get the same message out and keep it all consistent. And that way, you know, nobody's getting mixed messages. Nobody's over panicking over something that they shouldn't be. Yeah. So we want to uh, make sure that everybody is good. Uh, Derek, uh, you worked for the ambulance. We want people to do the same thing if they're calling the ambulance, right? Yes. So um, our ambulance services have implemented a, a pre screening. If you call and you have flu like symptoms, uh, you will see our providers coming in your house with a mask, with goggles, with a gown on. This is in place for their protection. We can't afford to lose our, our EMS providers. Uh, you know, around our entire area, both sides of the border, our EMS uh, providers, are, uh, the system is taxed already. So if we lose any more, it's going to be devastating on, on not just our community, but the communities around us. And... Um, We've also provided guidance to the Hogansburg Dr. Sussney Volunteer Fire Department for safe practices. Um, we've canceled trainings and um, meetings that would be any more than 10 people. Um, I believe even the bingo was canceled, uh, church bingo on Sundays. Okay. All right. So, uh, again, we're looking at uh, making these changes, and the reason why they've made the changes is for the safety of you, for the safety of me, for the safety of our community. Yes. Um, so we appreciate pe people's patience, uh, and uh, we really, really uh, can't stress that enough. Uh, no sleepovers for the kids. Don't yeah. have birthday parties at your house where you've got five or ten kids in there. Um, it can be very dangerous. Uh, and, you know, people will say, well, I heard it doesn't affect kids. Well, uh, we have to make sure that we're following all of these uh, different procedures that come at the request of our uh, emergency services personnel and also uh, our leadership. Uh, and what would you do, uh, Derek, from a listener? What do you do if you think you have symptoms? So... The the um, the virus acts like much like a flu. If you're if you're experiencing flu-like symptoms, um, they say that a dry cough and some re respiratory issues, difficulty breathing, are what is the difference between this and and the flu? Um, please call nine one one our tribal police five one eight three five eight ninety two hundred or uh, Akwesasne Central Dispatch five six one three five seven five two thousand. When you call there. Please tell them that you have uh, you're experiencing symptoms of flu. If you request an ambulance, if you do not request an ambulance, please call our clinics um, 518-358-3141 for San Francisco Mohawk Tribe, 613-575-2341 uh, for Mohawk Council. Um, please call ahead if you want to report to the emergency room directly. Please call ahead. Uh, they um, the emergency room. Um, is going to put you in isolation. If there's no isolation rooms, uh, I was in Cornwall the other day working, and they were swabbing people in the parking lot and telling you, go home until we call you back. Yeah. And another part of it is if you're not sure what it means by shortness of breath, if you 
were able to walk 500 steps before, no problem, and now you can only walk 100 steps, that might be, and then your temperature as well. Take that yes. at least twice a, t- uh, twice a day, morning and in the uh, afternoon. Okay. Because the temperature is what they're really looking, or not really looking at, but part of it. That's a telltale. Anything 101 over 38 degrees Celsius is what they're looking okay. at. Yeah. Yes. All right, very good. Um, so anything else, gentlemen? It is a living, uh, not a living, it's a, it's an evolving situation. So things, like Derek said, will be changing almost daily, if not every other day for us, until we, things get more controlled yep. as best we can anyways. And um, from that, it's just listen to both, uh, not listen to, but aquasasana.ca and the tribe's website for recent updates. Perfect. Yeah. Um, also, like to thank uh, CKON, uh, Akwesasne TV, and uh, India Time as well for putting out the information as, as quickly as they can for us. Uh, they've been great partners. Um, I'd like to add, just to touch on what the state of emergency, what, what that means to us. And the declaration it really allows us to seek reimbursement down the road, state, uh, provincial, federal resources um, that will be made available. Um, and it also um, helps us make those difficult decisions like closing non-essential services. Uh, this is, and we enact the state of emergency for those purposes. Yep, for sure. Um, so we want people to realize that uh, it really helps us out. Like we said, uh, even with uh, the ice storm back in the day, mm-hmm. I know nothing was contagious, but um, we still had to declare those states of emergency. That's when, uh, do you think FEMA will be uh, uh, around here, or are you guys in touch with FEMA? Is that any part of this at all? So I, I've been in daily contact with our uh, regional representative for FEMA. They are on a strict work from home uh, detail. Okay. But uh, the president did enact the Stafford Act, which is the Disaster Relief Act, and it loosened up. Well, all that did was loosen up their ability to distribute funds as needed to us. Uh, so there is a there is a certain threshold that we have to meet uh, money wise to qualify. But again, with this pandemic being fluid, they that could very well change. Yep, for and with sure. MCA, our, like I said earlier, our health department is in contact with Public Health Canada uh, yes. regularly. And um, Trudeau's statement on a declaration of emergency as well frees up more fun, uh, funding for these agencies. Perfect. doesn't mean that the virus itself has mutated and become more dangerous to the public. It just frees up that money for pe- uh, for the yep. agencies. Yeah. Hmm. The flow. So earlier I touched on um, the emergency numbers and calling an ambulance um, as I stated before, the emergency rooms in our clinics are, are over capacity. Um, if you have the flu, if you're not really sick, if you know, if it's not an emergency, we ask you to please stay home. Uh, please treat it at home as you would the regular flu. Uh, and um, call ahead and you'll, you'll get direction. And we're, we're in the same way. We're relying on uh, the Franklin County Public Health Department. They're the experts in this. They're the ones that are providing guidance for us and for our clinic staff on any potential cases. Excellent. Very good. Well, thank you both uh, for coming in today. I thank you so much for your uh, blood, sweat, and tears you've put into this. And uh, it is only the beginning. Um, So thank you very much. Uh, Keep us in the loop. We'll be glad to tell anybody anything that uh, you need to pass along to the community. That's what we're all here for. Thank you. So wrapping up, guys, we're all set. Yes, thank you. Excellent. Now on 97.3 CKOM from the heart of Aquazasne. And uh, we are looking at uh, the event itself. Uh, for today's uh, programs. We're uh, wrapping up uh, for Didawatala. We remind you views and opinions expressed by our guests and our callers during Didawatala, not necessarily those of 97.3 CKL WEN or the Akwazasi Communication Society. Uh, we appreciate our guests coming in. Again, Scott Peters. Uh, Scott Peters is uh, our uh, Mohawk Council of Akwazasi Emergency Measures Program Coordinator and Derek Cummins is the Sivirges Mohawk Tribes Emergency Management and Safety Director, and both gentlemen working as part of the Aquazaste Joint Emergency Operations Planning Committee, and also uh, both gentlemen in charge of opening up the Emergency Operations Center, EOC. And uh, we can look for more information uh, from uh, uh, both gentlemen in the coming days uh, with regards to what the EOC can help with uh, here on the territory of Aquazaste as we uh, continue through this uh, state of emergency. Uh, 
uh, declaration, which has been issued by both of our governmental uh, governmental structures. So EOC at SRMT-NSN.gov and then EOC at Aquazeste.ca. Those are the two emails. And right now, uh, Derek Cummins, uh, EOC for the Sybridge's Mohawk Tribe. Uh, that phone number is 518-320-0019. And for a live edition of it, Nidawatala, the original air day of the program live, Tuesday, March 17th, 2020. I'm Reen Cook.